Okay. Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing Thanks great. For having me. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. Pleasure. So we're going to be talking about your book called Strange USA. And this is the same publisher as the Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. Yes, sir. Yes, this is a this is an a, an America focused uh, issue of Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. So you know we usually have something for something for everyone on every discipline. You know a little bit of science, pop culture, history, and this is this is just America and what makes America great, interesting, weird, strange, funny, charming, all of that. It's okay. a road trip book. It's a, instead of a bathroom reader, it's a it's a backseat reader for your road trips. Would you call it a trivia book? Absolutely, yes. It's it's uh, it's bite-sized facts designed for for short periods of reading. However, you may need that, whether it's in the bathroom or to regale a, f a friend with a fun fact. Yeah, everything is uh, one or two pages, about 100, 200 words a pop. So it's uh, it's easy to just pick up anywhere and uh, turn to anything you want and to find something interesting. How did you get involved with this book? Well, we were we were compiling. Uh, you know the bathroom reader as we as we always do and we we just kept coming up with fun stuff that was about america and and so we we kind of thought like let's ju let's just take all the you know all the goofy roadside attractions and all the foods that were invented in america and all the historical landmarks and and the ghost stories and just all this unique stuff and let's just make like a a road trip book like summer's coming we'll release it in the summer near 4th of July we can we can you know get a lot of celebrational america stuff in there that way and uh it just kind of came together after that so this with the bathroom reader and this this is kind of like a whole organization it's it is how many people cuz i had um gordon gordon yes okay you know yes, gordon my, gordon job now uh, my my old uh, my old mentor and uh, and boss he's uh, he's no longer he's no longer doing this he retired to go have to go have adventures that he he isn't going to write down anymore. So uh, I'm I'm taking over the mantle of Uncle John from him. So I'm he's he's left it, he's left it in my hands. So it's a uh, it's good. But yeah, there's there's about a half dozen of us who who put these things together. So uh, you know, a good four or five hundred pages every year is just the work of just a, just a few people, and we 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 joyously joyously work around the clock and year round to to put these together. So you've got the bathroom reader, and then you've got Strange USA. Is Strange USA a series, or is it a standalone? We've got a strange series. We've done some other, uh, you know, strange history, uh, strange Hollywood, and things like that. So it's it's just like the the shortest, goofiest, a, a little bit dark, a little bit weirder than what you'd usually find in a bathroom reader. Just sort of a bit edgier, but it's its own series. Well, we want people to buy the book after all, so I don't want to do too many but let's do a couple because just sure. as a sort of a teaser um there's something on here about uncle sam and it says funny and strange facts how did he come by his signature look you can answer that one but i want to know how he came by his name well uh, i mean i mean that precedes it uh it uh none of it dates to the american revolution which you would think like you would you think like you know there's posters hanging up you know, in all these little towns in the colonies, to urge you to fight for fight for America against the the, uh, the awful British. But it starts in in 1812 with the War of 1812. There was a meatpacker in upstate New York named uh, Samuel Wilson, and his company was tasked with supplying the meat to the U.S. soldiers. So uh, as all the crates are going out, he stamps them with U.S. to let you know, the whole uh, supply chain know where they were supposed to go. Uh, and some factory worker says, well, what does the U.S. stand for? Like he didn't connect that it's for United States. So he says, what's the U.S. for? And a coworker jokingly says, oh, it's for Uncle Sam because their boss is Samuel Wilson and they all called him Uncle Sam. Uh, and then that kind of took off. Like the, the troops heard that they it was called it Uncle Sam. And so they would see U.S. and they would be very appreciative that, Uncle Sam had sent them another, you know, package of goods, and and then other food suppliers started using Uncle Sam as well, uh, to the point where Uncle Sam just kind of became this, you know, mythological benefactor of America, and and this is a time when the country was new. We didn't we didn't have any mythological figures or or even any legends or historical figures like you know England had King Arthur, and we we didn't really have anything like that. So Uncle Sam kind of filled that 
filled that void. So, so the War of 1812 happens. We win. England loses. They're bitter about it. And then over the course of the 19th century, as the U.S. becomes, you know, more of a, a global superpower, the the editorial cartoonists in Britain start criticizing the U.S. And in the cartoons, they represent America as this towering, obnoxious figure, kind of garishly clad in, you know, the stars and stripes, like a man made of flags is what Uncle Sam is. And and they were make, they were trying to make fun of us. And then all these editorial cartoonists in the U.S. saw it and 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 they liked it. They owned it. They're like, you know, we're going to take ownership of this. You're not allowed to make fun of us anymore. We're going to take this and we're going to make it our own honest, earnest symbol of America. So by the end of the 1800s, uh, Thomas Nast, kind of the leading editorial cartoonist of the day, he's the one who kind of solidified the that look of, of Uncle Sam with the with the top hat and the and the and the striped pants and and the red, white, and blue everything. So a good almost you know, a good hundred years after the revolution is when Uncle Sam really solidified. You know, I feel silly that I did never, I never put the connection together of U.S. Uncle Sam as his initials. I didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I didn't either. Just I mean, like that it, factory guy. It, it looks, it seems so obvious, but uh, right. you, you wonder how many people in the United States miss that. Probably yeah. most. <laughs> I bet most of us did. Yeah. Exactly. What is the crazy coincidence of the Fourth of July? Since that's coming up, this is this is great because I I just I heard this and and we wrote this and I just didn't believe it because it it just seems like some some myth building on the level of you know George Washington chopping down the cherry tree. But apparently, two of the founding fathers, uh, two of the first presidents, they both died on the Fourth of July. Uh, on the same same Fourth of July, and on the fiftieth anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, so Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, bitter rivals since the presidential election of eighteen hundred, which is when they mutually invented negative campaigning. They said horrible things about each other, and they were always kind of kept each other at an arm's length after that. Uh, John Adams is determined to not only outlive Thomas Jefferson, but to live to see the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, which they were calling the Jubilee. So he's 92 and people did not live into their 90s at this time. So he holds out and he dies on July 4th, 1826, 50th anniversary. And his last words are, you know, filled with lament. Uh, they are Thomas Jefferson lives. But he, he didn't know that just a few hours earlier that day, Thomas Jefferson had died as well. You have to yeah. wonder, because right now in our country, the politics are about as nasty as I've ever seen it in my lifetime. And, oh, sure. And you have in to anybody's wonder. Anybody's lifetime, really. Yeah, you have to wonder what it was like then. It was just as nasty. <laughs> they they said, they said hor horrible things about each other, like... Um, uh, you know, just, you know, questioning each other's sexuality and, uh, you know, you know, loyalty to America, which is, you know, a pretty, 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 uh, you know, awful charge in, in the year 1800. So they were they were bitter about it forever. It's too bad we didn't have till they're, till they're, Sorry, oh, I was just going to say it's too bad we didn't have recordings or film or something of those times, yeah. you know, yeah, because it would have been really interesting. And I think it would have put things into perspective for people that you know, maybe what we're going through now isn't so original. It, it's it's really not. It's it, as awful as it is. It's a, uh, it's not original. This is this is very human. <laughs> exactly, and we we haven't changed. I mean, it it would add some humility to people because I think, as technology bounds, we think of ourselves. Our egos just get bigger and bigger, like a balloon. Oh, we've been <laughs> to the moon. You know, we have uh, smartphones. AI is coming all this stuff yeah. and yet you know what's changed really human nature is still the same yeah we can we can s send messages a lot quicker and and uh and and catch people's bad behavior a lot quicker <laughs> and the world's become more crowded yeah I mean, yes. that's about it uh okay let's do we got time for one more why don't you pick one uh did you know that the grand canyon is haunted no i didn't there, uh, in, in the mid-1950s, 
there were two virtually simultaneous small plane crashes. 120 people died, and they think that the pilots were trying to get better views of the canyons uh, for the passengers as they were flying by, but they crashed in a very remote part of the national park. So remote that they they could never fully recover all of the debris and the remains of the passengers. So it just kind of sat there, and it's called Crash Canyon now. And you could hike down there, and it takes a while, but in uh, the early 2000s, a park ranger working at the Grand Canyon decided to do it. So she hikes down there alone, camps out, wakes up at 3 in the morning to the sound of human voices, gets a little freaked out because this is remote, looks out the little tent flap, and sees this long line of people walking up the hill towards the crash site, and they're all wearing 1950s clothes. <laughs> oh. Didn't some guy just fall into the canyon? I mean, like, a couple of days ago? Yeah, I think so. I think somebody did. And, like, that's that's got to be hard to do, but tragic. But they've got that bridge now where you can, like, walk out onto... It's, it's like a sky bridge, but it, it's like super strong and you can like walk out and you're basically just hanging in the air above the Grand Canyon. You know, if, if you're into that, go for it. But that <laughs> that's too freaky for me. Yeah, I don't even want to take the mule ride down. I don't, <laughs> that doesn't that sound like, like fun. Seems like a very romantic notion that wouldn't play out. <laughs> All right, Brian, uh, is the book out? Books out. Uh, you can get it anywhere. It's uh, it's on Amazon. It's at your local bookstore. It's at your your favorite chain bookstore. Uh, you can go to portablepress.com, which is our website. We've got all our Uncle John's books on there, a bunch of other books. We've got a blog where we talk about, you know, historical fun facts all the time. So if you're into that, check it out. Okay. You said Portable Press? Portablepress.com. Okay, great. Well, Brian, thanks for coming on the show. This was a lot of fun. And, oh, thank you uh, so much. It's great to be here. I learned something today, which I'm going <laughs> to spring on my wife later tonight. <laughs> Good. All right. Take care, Brian. You too.